today is a day. Not only we got a sunrise after three days, three attempts. Uh, Sarah and I getting married on the ship uh, tonight. And today is actually last two excursions um, uh, before we head into through the Drake Passage back to Argentina, back to Ushuaia. So, mixed feelings, um, but nevertheless, very uh, grateful for the trip and for the experience we, we had. Oh, goes right directly. Almost directly though. Oh, oh my god. There we go. Mm. Oh, 
Blood. Are these circling because we're here? Are they circling because there's krill in the area? Krill. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I want to believe it's for us, but I think it's for the krill. Yeah. But we'll take the show. When they yeah, yeah. They're, they're coming, they tend to the, Yeah, right, the right, so yeah. Cool and and it kind of steel. put yeah, that I'm in one of our PowerPoints. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I say they want to, yeah. they, they want to, they know. Mm -hmm. They get tired and they need to make some milk. What about you? What about yeah, so we can have until 10. We have to be back what, 11? Picture time. The hair is no up like and slant down. All right, babes, are you ready? Oh, it's a video. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone cold? No, I'm fine. A heart speed to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. Hello. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young, Thank and you. it's just begun. She puts her hand in mine We want to chase the night Want to dance to the light Pulls us from the sky Just two hearts running wild Never sleep, never stop Every shot from the top We're gonna, we're gonna be Two hearts running wild
Where's my new photographers, my best friends? Weather is amazing. It's not even cold. Okay, look at that and tell me this is not the best view on the planet. Honestly, with weather being so great, to me it almost feels like we're on another planet. If not for people around us on the ship and ship itself. Last excursion. That's the final one for, for us on this trip to the actual continent. Hey. Woody will give you the last zodiac time here as soon as we touch shore. It's funny, people like penguins on the continent standing in random spots looking in different directions doing their own their own thing. Water with a snowman, five bucks. Not sure how easy it will be to hear me on the video with a uh, little bit of wind here, uh, but you know, we are on actual continent and um, I guess what to expect from uh, Antarctica? Expect uh, unexpected, you know, um, don't set expectations because uh, weather is very unpredictable, um, no cruise is like any other um, different places visited uh, depending on the weather you, you may not have a single um, you know zodiac trip um, but we were lucky we were lucky and what I mean by weather is um, unpredictable uh, look how sunny it is and just just an hour ago just an hour ago everything were clear and look behind me storm clouds um, heading our way so we'll stay in the continent for a little bit and head out back on the ship
explanation, another explanation. Uh, in one case, okay, almost time. Feeling a bit worried. Um, polishing my mouth. This is pretty good. Mm -hmm. You don't. I'll be fine. You don't broom all the stairs. Yeah, that's, not, I mean, that's fair. Four, seven. Mm -hmm. Come on
Yeah. Grab a seat. Seriously. And this is a tradition that we have that as we sail north when we are leaving Antarctica, we make a toast. And I'd like to propose three, so you'll be able to empty your glass, but you have to judge that carefully. There's a first toast I'm going to mention to you, but it's not a toast that I'm making. The toast, sometimes it was made amongst the Antarctic explorers to wives and sweethearts. May they never meet. <laughs> Clearly not a toast I would be making. It would be very not woke of me to do that. <laughs> Now I'm going to make suitable toasts and the first one I'd like to make is to absent family and friends. But don't drink straight away because they're the people who when you said you were going to Antarctica said, why? They might have said, are the beaches good? Or look out for the bears. Sometimes it is best they're absent. But we still love them. To absent family and friends. Cheers, is uh, to a very special group of people, it's to you our guests, because coming to Antarctica is something that involves a very specific choice and an idea to go on an expedition to cross the Drake Passage, hopefully twice. <laughs> And to go out and insert yourself into a hostile, potentially hostile environment to experience a very special place, which it's a privilege to do, but it's also challenging and it takes a spirit of adventure. And uh, we have a passion for this place and for sharing it. And you have a spirit of adventure, which means that's the reason you've been here. So to you and to your spirit of adventure. Cheers. Cheers. And the third toast, I guess, is self-evident. We said it was to a toast to Antarctica. And so this toast is to Antarctica, uh, an incredible place. We hope it's touched all of you and you'll be ambassadors for it. Grand and astonishing landscape with incredible inhabitants. And we've been so lucky to see so much of what it has to offer. So to Antarctica. Cheers. that it is finished and prepared to show you now. So, um, so we, we joined the ship, we uh, did our drill, we got all prepared and we set sail yes. away and we were sailing out into the Drake Passage and there was some trepidation because it has a reputation for being tempestuous. We got pond, Drake Lake. You never say no. You never say no to Drake Lake. And of course, uh, we crossed 60 degrees. We were preparing for the first iceberg. Norm had got us guessing where it would be. And uh, we were coming towards the South Shetlands. We got our first icebergs, and that was uh, pretty amazing. Great, as we sailed in. And it was moody and atmospheric with that low hanging cloud, and it was misty. And of course, we were first coming to this uh, volcano, this volcanic island deception. And we couldn't really see the entrance um, as we approached. And uh, we sailed in really close to the uh, wall of Neptune's bellows. And we landed and cruised at Whaler's Bay. And it was pretty moody and atmospheric for the whole time. And I know some people put their hand into the, the sand near the beach and could feel that heat that's still being generated. It's a really interesting place to be and very different from everything else we would experience here. And as we sailed out, close to the caldera wall, lifted, and we got this uh, incredible vision of this wonderful landscape. And then overnight, we sailed down across the Bransfield Strait. We came deep into the peninsula area, and uh, it was uh, really, really gorgeous and glowing. But this was the large part <laughs> of our time. And, uh, Stevens critiqued this for me. I like the leading lines that come in to tell a story. 
I'm drawing a blank on a large part of the story. But this speaks to me a little bit about um, an expedition. Because we had multiple plans this day. We started off wanting to come in here. We couldn't see anything. We came and looked here. It was still like, really heavy. And we're looking at the, the weather chart and the forecast and thinking, oh, well, if we go a little bit further out, maybe we'll find a, an opening, a, a window, an oasis of uh, clarity. And, uh, and so we sailed up to useful honour. We did see things, but we only saw them when they were really close to the ship. But maybe that was a good harbinger of good fortune because we were going to see whales on this ship. My goodness. So we came to Useful Island and the captain brought us very close to the island and we could see things. So that was the time to get out and venture. And we did. We only had cruised. We saw penguins and fur seals, we got some whale action and icebergs, a bit of a glimpse of a chin strap as well as gentoos, and we became very familiar with our penguin friends. What does Gene say about the gentoos? We give them a gold star because they're. Wow! Incredible, they learned so well. Gene is so proud. But as we came back to the ship, it was misty, moody, and atmospheric. We never talked badly about the weather. Never. It's not good luck. We came back in the Gurlash Strait to Coomerville Island. And once again, Captain actually brought us really nice and close to, to Coomerville for our excursion. And it opened up. It was a little bit misty here and there, challenging on the rocks, but penguins everywhere. And we were a curiosity for the penguins. Lots of adults and chicks and molting penguins. I saw people walking on water. It was a religious experience, but that wouldn't be the only time we saw people walking on water. It was impressive, amazing icebergs, some great paddling, and uh, so there was a really wonderful time at Coolville. We repositioned a little bit further south, and uh, there was some concern on the bridge about uh, visibility and ice. Well, the visibility improved, then the challenge was the ice, and how the Lemaire Channel narrows, these amazing formations. We had a great narrative from Norm on the public address system explaining um, some of these rock formations and features. And, uh, and then we started down. And look how it narrows. We're thinking, how are we going to get the ship through there? We were saying the same on the bridge. <laughs> but let's go and see. And as we came closer, perspective changed and we found a way. I should say the captain and the bridge team found a way. Because like you, I was enjoying the views and thinking how delightful it was. We came through the Lemaire Channel, we came into this area off uh, Planeau Island, and we went out and explored. Once again, ship in a great position. I always look back at the ship and just think, how small is this ship and how grand is this landscape? And then, of course, we saw big chicks, big fat chicks, and lots of penguins, some whales, and icebergs, and uh, and then we, we ventured further south, down close to where our further south was, which was near Peterman Island. Here we wanted to land and cruise. And of course, uh, Jean was in search of the Adelis. Oh, the worry, the concern. We saw lots of gentoos, that was good. We fell in Vailic. You know, we'd had our penguin fix. And the ice was wonderful too. It was further south. And the ice started streaming past as well. So there was uh, some pathos. And this amazing ice, red and green and icebergs in the distance, continental Antarctica, not far away. Oh, we've got the Adelis. I breathe a sigh of relief. Jean would have been, I don't know what we would have done, but thank goodness. They did it again. More paddling. I love these pictures because, wow. You know, kayakers aren't good for much, but they're so good for colour and scale. And this is where you really put them to good use. The following morning, we sailed into Anvord Bay and we were hoping to, to land here. But you know, when you're on an expedition, it's not a bus trip, it's not a place that things are guaranteed. We, we take everything we can, but it's what nature allows us to do in this incredible environment. And of course, there was a bit of ice around. And uh, at this point, the captain said, oh, what do you want to do? I said, well, if we can't go there, let's 
go out now. I mean, this is still um, astonishing. And uh, so out we went. We saw some really great things. Penguins on ice. Lots of ice. We saw some seals around. And, of course, um, some good whale action. But the truth is you could go out in the Zodiac in that bay, leave the engine off and just float, and it would be an astonishing experience. Just, you know, wonderful. Well, we had to make another decision here because the idea was to come out of Anvord Bay and come in here, but it was blocked with ice. We're very familiar with this area, and so we were looking at the wind and the ice, and uh, so we made a different decision to uh, go to an alternate place, and we came into the Herrera Channel on the side of Danko Island, and here we found a good place for the ship. It was still windy and breezy, but um, certainly safe for us to go out and, and explore. The ship looked calm. But it was a bit breezy, wasn't it? Yeah. So we saw some good action, there was leopard seal. That doesn't really show how windy and choppy it was, but um, but then, uh, yeah, some beautiful views of the ship. I should also say that you can't go out in conditions like that without really solid, experienced Zodiac drivers. And so a uh, big round of applause. <laughs> The ship and there was some ice streaming around the ship and we made the decision that we would reposition the ship because we wanted to offer the chance for a polar plunge. So we, we repositioned the ship, our three Zodiacs followed and then we set up for the polar plunge. Yay! Congratulations to our polar plungers. Temperature around zero. 97 people. What a phenomenon. Round of applause for yourself. And then the following morning, beautiful, beautiful. This is like someone tore the picture out of the brochure and gave us the brochure final day. We came into Foyne Harbour and just glorious ice. Of course, many of us had uh, opportunities to see whales as we have during our voyage, but the landscape is incredible. The light was beautiful and a really lovely experience. But we hadn't landed on the continent. We had landings in Antarctica. And so this was, oh, we were nervous again. This was something we really wanted to do. And the weather was great. The access was straightforward. There wasn't ice packed on the shore. And just vision in every direction, all of the, every color popping, just like absolutely wonderful. And uh, some celebration. And then we, we came back on board, it was time to say farewell to Antarctica, and we set sail. We took a great picture up on deck, and then we sailed out past the South Shetlands into the Drake Passage. Well, a little bit of uh, the Drake Passage dialed up slightly um, for the experience. We had our great option, and a big thank you, because that was a phenomenal effort I've written to Tom Hart at Oxford. And he says a big thank you to all of you. So another round of applause, because that was fantastic. And then as we've been sailing along, we've had some beautiful seabirds following the ship. But truthfully, I think it's worthy of reflection of how special the place, you know, the, the continent that's the driest, the windiest, the coldest, and hopefully it's touched all of you and you're now ambassadors to this very special place. Thank you. And I have to sort of pinch myself because that was our extraordinary adventure together. Yes, sir. What the time we've shared. I'd like to invite all the staff to come down and join me on stage, because it's um, a huge team effort. Lots of staff who uh, love the places we travel to and love sharing it uh, with our guests. A wonderful group of passionate polar professionals. Once a trip, do they look this good in one place at a time? And on my behalf, and I'd 
invite you to say a big thank you to my team. Thank you. smile because it happened, don't cry because it's over. It's particularly been a bittersweet for us as a team, as I'm sure that many of you have noticed that uh, we do this because we love it, and we do it because this is like working with your family. Now, all of these things that you've experienced during this voyage, they don't just happen. It requires a lot of planning, it requires that gold star flexibility. <laughs> it, it requires a lot of time and effort that goes on behind the scenes. You've, you've seen the, uh, the hotel crew, the, the uh, restaurant crew, the bar crew, you've seen all of those people behind the scenes. What you don't see is the hours that go into uh, changing the plan. The hours that go into being on the bridge, uh, talking with people to decide what is the right thing to do to make the right choice to give you the right voyage so that you can have the best time possible. And all of these decisions are made not in isolation, but mostly the weight of those decisions lies on the shoulders of the expedition leader. And this voyage has been exceptional uh, not just because of you, not just because of the team, but because of the decision making that happens behind the scenes. And for us, uh, and many of you know that this is the final voyage of the season for yeah. us. And so it's not just a departure for you, but a departure for us. And we'd really like to take this moment to recognise the leadership of Woody out here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great night.